The month of May is National Foster Care Month and I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about a lot of things that you guys asked me concerning foster care. As you know, I'm Heather Bell, AKA Mama Bell, married to Luke Bell. We've been married, this year will be 27, pretty sure 27 years. We've been together for over 30 years. Um, we were foster parents for 13 years. We struggle with infertility and that's why we adopted our oldest son, David. And then we became foster parents shortly after and adopted six more of our children. And in the midst of that, I got pregnant with Gideon after eight years. And so we do have eight children. Unfortunately, at that time in the state of Michigan, you're only allowed eight children in your home, including your own biological children. So we had to close our license. And I was very sad with that because I wasn't ready. I still wanted to be even maybe a help short term, like short term placements or emergency placements or respite. So I was kind of disappointed, but you know, I just had to start focusing then on the children that we had in our home and trying to help them heal and, and get through all the, oh, the, the, the struggles of being in foster care. So that's just kind of who we are. So now I'm gonna um, start answering questions. And I think this is probably gonna be like a four parter because I have a whole list of questions of that people ask us that I wanna address. So let's get going on the first The question. number one question that I get is, why did you and your husband become foster parents? And I know a lot of people think, or they get the perception that, that people will become foster parents strictly to adopt. And that wasn't our case. I was very thankful that, that I had one child and that, um, you know, his birth mom chose us to be his parents and, but she's still in his life. And I'm very thankful for that because she's amazing. Uh, but we'll touch on biological, you know, families later. Um, and so I was content, you know, I thought, okay, if God just wants me to have one, I'm thankful for that. And, but I just felt like as moms, we're nurturers, right? We want to save everybody. We want to save the whole world. We want to hug everybody. We want to mother everybody. And I just felt like I wanted to do more. Like I wanted to be a part of something. I wanted to make a difference in, in my community. I wanted to be a help to those around me. Um, I, I wanted to just be, I don't know, be a mother to everybody. And so um, my, a friend of ours who had been a foster parent, her and her husband for, oh my goodness, 30 years, had said, have you looked into foster care? And I'm like, honestly, I didn't know what foster care was. I mean, I'll be straight up with you. I had no idea what foster care was. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even know it was a thing. So we looked into foster care um, and we did become foster parents, but we became foster parents because we wanted to be a help. We wanted to be a help not only to the children, but also to the entire family unit. We wanted to be another support group. We wanted to be a place where the parents didn't have to worry about their kids while they're trying to get their life right. They knew that they were safe. They knew that we were taking care of them. Um, and they knew, and we knew and they knew it was short term because the ultimate goal of foster care is reunification. It's not adoption. And I do realize as a mom who adopted six children through foster care, there are circumstances that give you the opportunity to adopt or maybe rights have been terminated and they're, they're waiting to be adopted. And so, and for each of our kids, there were different circumstances um, surrounding their adoption, but um, we just wanted to be a help. We wanted to be a support group. I just wanted to make a difference in the lives of others. I just wanted them to know that I loved them, I care about them, and I support them. And so even with our oldest son, David, we chose to, to make it open adoption because we still wanted David's family to be a part of his life. And that's how we were with foster care. We wanted the parents to feel, um, to trust us, to feel comfortable with us, knowing that we were gonna help them and support them as much as we could. Like I said, there's circumstances where you're not allowed, you, not that you're not allowed, but it's maybe not healthy or maybe not safe to be 100% in with the, the biological parents. But we did try to be open and we allowed them to come into our home and we invited them to church and we invited them to the kids' sporting events and birthdays. And so we, we wanted to be very um, engaged with them and, and to be another support system with them. Um, so that's basically why we got into foster care was we just wanted to make a difference in our community and help heal. That's basically it. Now I want to talk about love, loving the children that come into your home, loving their families. And you would think love would be so easy. It's so easy to love people. 
But sometimes that's the hardest, right? It's, it's so hard to love people if they're angry at you, if they're mean to you, if they attack you. I mean, it, it's really hard to love them, but you can't go into foster care and not have a love for them. Even if they've done so many things wrong, even if they are, are still doing things wrong, even if children have been hurt or families have been divided, you still have to love them. And I think when you show love, not only to the children, but the families, it encourages them because they know that you support them and that you care about them and that you're on their side and you wanna be a help to them. And I think, I, I mean, I've had um, foster moms that they, you know, we, we told them, we love you, we wanna be here for you. And they trusted us and we were able to help them and work with them. And there's some that I've reunited with recently and I love so much and I wish I could see them more. You know, and there's some that I get to see sometimes where we have coffee or we, I just check on them or, or maybe we're friends on Facebook or, you know, um, I went to one of their graduation parties, you know, so um, you just have to really love them. It's really important to love that whole family, even your the children that are in your home, their siblings, their grandmas, their grandpas, their aunts, their uncles, and their biological parents, their parents. And I just, I feel like if you have a love for them, so when they do leave our homes and go home to theirs, it will be easier. And even though you're sad to see them go, you'll still be at peace. And so I feel like love, I think sometimes when you have foster families or foster parents that it, things aren't going well, I think they just don't have a love for the family or the kids. And I, and I feel like love is very healing. Now let's talk about the foster care system. What do I think about the foster care system? I think there's a lot of work to be done. I think it's broken. And I really do feel like there's not enough education for parents and resources. I feel like our social workers are overworked. They, there's not enough of them. And they're trying very hard to do their job. And I get it that they look, a lot of people look at them as the enemy and that they're causing problems. And I get it, there's not always good ones. There's good ones, bad ones, and that's with anything. But I just feel like they're so overworked, underpaid, and there's just not enough. And so they're trying to do the job of many people when there should be people in each department. And so I think that they're stretched and I think that they can only do so much. You know, they, they're kind of at the mercy of the state or at the government, you know, and I feel like they can only do so much. And there's so many broken homes that they can't keep up. They can't keep up and they're trying to do their best. And I feel like they get a lot of, a lot of people attack them when the, that's not the problem. The problem is the family unit. And I really feel like we need more um, education classes, more resources, um, things like budgeting, um, uh, life skills. When my son Joshua was in school, he had special needs and so he attended life classes to teach him how to live outside the home, how to balance a checkbook, how to go grocery shopping, you know, um, how to find the right job, how do you pay your bills. I think that's very important. And I think them having the tools to help them with their simple life skills is a big deal parenting classes, um, what to do at different stages of their lives, what to expect when they're babies, what to expect when they're toddlers, what to, and, and I know that's a lot, but a lot of parents, moms and dads, they're not getting taught these simple life skills. So they get frustrated. They don't know how to address things in the home. They don't know how to address maybe when your finances get low or when your kids are acting up. And so they get stressed and they turn to things that they feel like it's gonna help, but in fact destroys the family. So I really do feel like education classes, and, and I've actually really prayed and looked about, and looked on how to maybe start things like this, and it would help them be more sustainable, uh, more successful, and then raising their children to be successful. So that's how I feel would really lower family, you know, the, the broke, it would really, I, I'm on my words are blue. I, I really feel I could make a family unit more successful and there wouldn't be such a need for foster parents. So the last one we're gonna talk about in this part one 
is biological families. How my, me and my husband dealt with biological families, how much we integrated ourselves, and what's our thoughts on being a part of biological families. And I know if you've followed us long enough, you know that we are very, we believe in being a part of the biological families. With my son, David, who we adopted through private adoption, we chose to keep it, we chose to keep it open because we had a choice, close or open. We chose to keep it open because we really truly believe that David needed both of us, our family and their family. And we also needed their family. And I feel like the mom needed me and I needed her. We needed that friendship and that trust. I am not gonna cry. I always cry when I talk about things like this. And so I, even with foster care, so if you adopt through foster care, you don't have a choice. When you adopt through foster care, it's always a closed adoption, always. You can choose how much interaction that you and the children have with their families. That's, that's what you choose, how much, and, and how much you wanna be a part of their lives. But my husband and I really believed that all of our children that we adopted needed their birth families too. And we needed them. We needed to be a strong unit together to help raise these children because it's true. You really do need a village to raise a child. And we have eight of them. We can use all the help. We will take all the help that we can get. And so it was really important with us for us that our children had their birth families in their lives, whether it's uncles, aunts, cousins, siblings, a mom, dad, grandparents, I don't know if I say grandparents, but that was really important for us because we wanted our children as they grew to have them in their life for support. We wanted them at the football games. We wanted them at the graduations. We wanted them to come for Easter dinner, Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. We wanted the moms and grandmas to stay overnight and wake up in the morning and watch the kids open their presents. We wanted that. We knew how important it was to our children because that's the main focus and that's what's the most important is the children. And we didn't want them to grow up resenting us or resenting their birth families. We wanted it just to be another part of their life. Hey, I got two moms, two dads, uh, eight grandparents. You know, we, we wanted that whole family unit and our, our family is different. It's not the normal family because we, my kids have lots of grandparents and you know what's wonderful? Like Isabella's grandma, we love her so much. She's actually super cool. She's a grandma to all my kids. When she brings Izzy presents, she brings them all presents. And she says, I'm Grandma Janelle. And so not only by keeping all of everybody involved with our family, all the, all the extended family, it's created one big family and now they all know each other. They might not be best friends with each other, but they know each other and they talk and it's, it's so wonderful. I actually would love to do a family reunion with all of their families and us. I think that would be wonderful. It's already in the makings. I kind of thought it the other day and I'm thinking that would be great. And so when my kids were growing up, um, some of them we adopted younger and some older, we always talked about adoption. It was just a, a normal, natural conversation. We talked about it. We The kids knew they were adopted. And we waited, of course, I had a couple kids that were younger, so we waited. They, they, we would talk about adoption, but I didn't really like sit down and address it until I felt like they kind of understood, but they knew the word adopted, they knew adoption, they knew their, their birth families. And so it was just kind of natural as we grew. So I didn't want my kids to one day grow up and be like, I'm adopted? I have family? I don't believe in keeping things like that secret because it's gonna come back to bite you in the butt. Whenever you keep secrets and you're not honest, it's going to come back. It is. And your children are going to resent you, resent the birth family. And it's just not good. And it's not healthy. And also, as our kids got older, they needed all of us, their birth families and us. So as they, as they continue to grow into adults, it would help them heal. If they had questions that I couldn't answer, they had their birth families. And I just... I didn't want there to be any resentment as the kids got older. And, and I felt like having them in their life helped healing. Do I think my kids are perfect and, and they're not still a little upset? I think they're probably still upset, you know, because kids don't understand. But having us all together 
supporting them would make it easier and maybe make them more comfortable in asking questions in expressing their emotions and how they feel. And I just, they needed the support of them. They needed the support of us. We needed the birth families. I feel like the birth families needed us too because there has to be that trust and love that we talked about. And we're all a family unit. And I feel like now that my kids are, are getting older, I think it's easier now. And I think they get it. All my children would like to become foster parents, possibly adopt if the opportunity opens up because they understand. And I feel that's why they're so great with younger kids and other kids who are struggling because they get it. And so for us, we wanted the birth families in their lives. We needed them in, in their lives. We needed them in our lives just so we have a huge support system, like a big old hug. There's like a big old hug, you know? And you know, even with um, some of our, our children, are looking for siblings, aunts and uncles, and their birth parents. And I'm completely supportive of that because, you know, even if we adopted them, they're still gonna be a little whole because they love their family. One more thing before we finish this part one is with our birth, our children's birth families, we never destroyed their families. We never talked about them bad. We always made sure to lift them up. We always made sure to let them know we love them and that it's okay for them to love them too. I actually would love some of their birth families to be more involved in my kid's life because I think they need it even more. And as they get older and build their families, they need them even more. And so I would like to see them more in our home and more and, and come over more and do things. And so I'm constantly messaging um, all the family members, hey, we're doing this, we're doing this. Hey, we're gonna do this. Hey, come over, come over. Because I want them to be more involved and I want to build that relationship with them too. I want them in my life too. I just, I love them so much. And I'm very thankful though. We, we have wonderful children with wonderful birth families. I mean, I, I can't even be more blessed. I, I'm just so, so thankful. But just make sure that if you do have children in your lives, maybe you don't even like the birth families. It don't matter. You still uplift them. You still be kind to them and you still love them because your kids still love them. And so you have to uplift them. You have to make those birth families look even better than us. We need to lift them up and exalt them. We have to for our children. It's so important. It's, it's about the children. It's not about us at all. So lift them up, love them. Always say good things to your kids about them. Make sure you're supporting them and make sure your kids know that you're supporting their birth families and you're supporting them because I'm telling you, I have adult kids now and I'm seeing the choices we made before. I'm seeing it now, but it's so important that you are aware of what you do now. Will so this is part you. one of answering questions concerning foster care. And so next, the next video, we're gonna be talking about trauma, the first day of placement, um, being an advocate and special needs. So ooh, those are kind of tough things. Whew. The next video is going to be intense. I feel <laughs> I better get start collecting my thoughts now, but thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your support of our family. If you have any more questions on foster care, put them in the comments, message me. I would be happy to answer what I can. I know things have changed since I was a foster parent. Um, but the need and the love for children and their families hasn't changed. That's always going to be something they need. But make sure to subscribe to Just the Bells 10. Get, get our family out there so people can see who we are. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful, I don't think I've sang lately, have I? Somewhere over the rainbow. My husband told me, I love your singing, but you need more stories than singing. So I'm going to have to think of some good stories for you guys. But I like to sing. I like to sing. So look at this beautiful necklace my son gave me, Gideon. I love it so much. It's my birthstone, May birthstone. All right, thank you very much. See you later, alligator in a while, crocodile.